Well, good morning. I'm currently in Arizona. We had a wonderful time over here, not too far away from where I'm at right now, being able to share together about the truth regarding what the Bible says about God. One of the things we talked about, which I found very interesting, was that I right now, if I wanted to, I could choose to have the spirit of Satan. I could curse and yell and scream and, and lie and do all sorts of evil things. And at that very same time, right then, right now, you also could choose to have the spirit of Satan. You could choose to lie and cheat and steal and do all sorts of things that we know are contrary to God's will. And so what does that mean? Does that make Satan's spirit omnipresent? Where well, you're like, wait, wait, what? Well, wait a minute. I can have Satan's spirit. So could that guy next to me. So could that person living up on the hill over there. So could the folk that I'm staying with. And you could too, right now, like all at the same time. So what does that mean? Well, you can have Christ's spirit too. I could have it right now. You could have it right now. Those people up there could have it right now. So do the folk that uh, are housing me. They could have it too. So what does that mean? Does that mean Christ's spirit is omnipresent? Well, wait a minute, if, if I can have Satan's spirit right now, or if I'd I could have Christ's spirit right now, what does this mean? And so think about this, you guys. Think about the fact that the Bible doesn't even use the word omnipresent. And we've come up with this idea that makes God's spirit somehow everywhere, and Satan's spirit can't be. But no, wait a minute. Satan's spirit, sure, it's definitely here on this earth, and it's surrounded by this, you know, atmosphere that we live in, but... Let's not say that here on the earth, God's spirit is omnipresent, but Satan's is not. Because really, it's the same thing. It, it's accessible to anybody. And I think that if you could show me that I am wrong in this thinking, then please help me to know and understand. One of the verses we talked about in that conversation was Acts chapter 5, verse 32, where it says that God gives his spirit to them that obey him. And that means, of course, that God doesn't give his spirit to them that don't obey him, right? Of course, there's the wooing and the appealing and like, come to me. And so when you are appealed to by the spirit, sure, that's, that's something that we can um, receive. But to have it for your own, to choose to have it in your mind, that's a different story. So we can all have God's spirit. We can all have Satan's spirit right now. So what does that mean for us?